The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, or LTFRB, on Friday releases the order for a 9 peso minimum fare for jeepneys. Earlier, the board approved a 1 peso provisional fare increase in public utility jeepneys in Metro Manila, Central Luzon, and Calabar Zone. There will be no increase for succeeding kilometers. Hours before the order's release, the LTFRB appeals to jeepney drivers not to charge higher fare because it's not effective without the order. Jeepney drivers and operators filed a petition in September 2017 asking the LTFRB to increase the minimum fare to 10 pesos, citing higher fuel prices. The Office of the President, or OP, spent 2.5 billion pesos in confidential and intelligence funds in 2017, compared to 705 million pesos in 2016, an increase of about 250%. Duterte's intel funds are much higher than any other Philippine president since 1989. The Budget Department said the funds would be used mainly for President Duterte's war against drugs, criminality, and corruption. By its very nature, intel funds are difficult to audit. For 2018, Duterte gets another 2.5 billion pesos in intel funds. The Philippines deports Methodist missionary Tawanda Chandiwana of Zimbabwe after the Bureau of Immigration frees him after more than eight weeks in detention. The Immigration Bureau accuses Chandiwana of overstaying and engaging in political activities. Chandiwana's lawyer, Christina Conti, tells Rappler the missionary was released Thursday and left the country around 3 p.m. the same day. Chandiwana is expected to arrive in Zimbabwe Friday night. The BI ordered Chandiwana and two other Methodist missionaries, American Adam Thomas Shaw and Malawi national Miracle Osman, to leave the Philippines because they allegedly joined political activities. Shaw left the Philippines on Wednesday. The NCCP says it hopes Miracle Osman will be finally given clearance to leave the country soon. Conti says the church decided to pull them out of the Philippines for security reasons, but adds they will clear their record. She reiterates they are not terrorists. Their mission work here has been well within the bounds of law, the church's values, and their vocation. A former Thai military diver helping to rescue a football team trapped inside a flooded cave drowns Friday as time runs out for the young boys. Diver Saman Kunon passed out and died while returning from the chamber where the boys are trapped. He was part of a team trying to establish an oxygen line to the chamber where the children await their rescue. The diver's death raises serious doubts over the safety of bringing the 12 boys and their football coach out through the narrow passageways of the flooded Tam Luang Cave. Many of the boys, aged between 11 to 16, can't swim and no one has diving experience. Thailand's Navy SEAL commander admits they cannot wait out the monsoon underground and says they have limited time. Even for expert divers, the journey is an exhausting 11-hour round trip. State Weather Bureau Pag-asa warns the southwest monsoon will bring rain to parts of Luzon and Visayas on Saturday, July 7. The monsoon will also be enhanced by Maria, a typhoon which has intensified outside the Philippine Area of Responsibility, or PAR. In a bulletin issued 4 p.m. Friday, Pag-asa warns Metro Manila, Batangas, Cavite, Bataan, Palawan, Oriental Mindoro, Occidental Mindoro, and Western Visayas will experience light to heavy rain on Saturday, due to the southwest monsoon. These areas should be on alert for possible flash floods and landslides. Typhoon Maria strengthened further while outside par. It now has maximum winds of 185 kilometers per hour and gustiness of up to 225 kilometers per hour. The typhoon is located 2,060 kilometers east of central Luzon, still moving north-northwest at 15 kilometers per hour. If Maria's speed and direction do not change, it could enter par on Monday morning or afternoon, July 9th, and will be given the local name Gardo. Mm -hmm. 